let me prove my case. The Federal Reserve determines what the average person's car payment is going to be, what their house payment is going to be, and whether they have a job or not. And I submit to you that that's total control. And the Federal Reserve is the largest single creditor of the United States government. What does Proverbs tell us? The borrower is servant to the lender. What one has to understand is that from the day the Constitution was adopted right up to today, the folks who profit from privately owned central banks, as Madison called them, the money changers, have fought a running battle for control over who gets to print America's money. Why is who prints the money so important? Think of money as just another commodity. If you have a monopoly on a commodity that everyone needs, everyone wants, and nobody has enough of, there are lots of ways to make a profit and also exert tremendous political influence. That's what this battle is all about. Throughout the history of the United States, the money power has gone back and forth between Congress and some sort of privately owned central bank. The Founding Fathers knew the evils of a privately owned central bank. First of all, they had seen how the privately owned British Central Bank, the Bank of England, had run up the British national debt to such an extent that Parliament had been forced to place unfair taxes on the American colonies. In fact, as we'll see later, Ben Franklin claimed that this was the real cause of the American Revolution. Most of the Founding Fathers realized the potential dangers of banking and feared bankers' accumulation of wealth and power. Jefferson put it this way, I sincerely believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. That succinct statement of Jefferson is, in fact, the solution to all our economic problems today. It bears repeating, the issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. James Madison, the main author of the Constitution, agreed. Interestingly, he called those behind the central bank scheme money changers. Madison strongly criticized their actions. History records that the money changers have used every form of abuse, intrigue, deceit, and violent means possible to maintain their control over governments by controlling money and its issuance. The battle over who gets to issue our money has been the pivotal issue throughout the history of the United States. Wars are fought over it, depressions are caused to acquire it. Yet after World War I, this battle was rarely mentioned in newspapers or history books. Why? By World War I, the money changers, with their dominant wealth, had seized control of most of the nation's press.